Good morning or good afternoon, wherever you may be, or good evening or good night. This is Jen at Jen's Arty Inclinations, a place to create, share and play. Hi everyone. Today I'm showing you a super easy pop-up and I decided to make it into a vase of flowers and it's so super simple. I used to make these cards when I was at school where I'd get a normal piece of paper and I'd fold it in four just like what you're seeing here and on the inside fold of the card we would make a single cut and then what we'd do is we'd make a little pop-up out of it to create a face. So I'm kind of just showing you the same process here, putting a single cut in it and then what you do is you invert those folds. So instead of them folding in, you fold them out and you get like a little beak, you know, like a little mouth and you'll see how this turns out and I'll draw on it so that you can actually see what I mean. But once you press those down, then you can open it up and see, you get like a little opening mouth that can talk to people. And we used to put a little speech bubble out of it to say, you know, happy birthday or whatever we, you know, we're going to say. So if I put some lips on it, you'll see what I mean. There's some little, you know, nose nostrils and a nice big juicy set of lips. And obviously we'd, you know, change these about and we'd change the faces, but this was the basic face that everyone in my class and everyone in my year seem to uh, actually do. So see, then he talks to you. It really is easy and it's fun. And even if all you do is make those cards for your kids, it is just fun. So that's all the vase of flowers is. The vase is simply the bottom half of the beak. All right, so we'll take a closer look. This is the piece that I'm going to use for my vase. And you know, we start the same way, but this time we only need to fold it in half once. And then we can fold down the top corner to make the vase. And then I just cut out the shape of the vase. And I'll show you that bit a little bit later. But first I'll just show you all I do to put flowers into the vase is I put some on the background and I put some on the front. Now, admittedly, it's definitely easier if you don't stick your vase down first. And the reason you didn't see me making the vase is because kids interrupted and of course I forgot to turn my video back on. Who else has done that out there? <laughs> Seems to be a status normal. You know, the phone rings or the front door goes. It's always just as you're filming. Now, these flowers, all they were was die cuts that I did out of different pieces of scrap paper scraps that I had. And yeah, they work quite well. So this one, I'm kind of glad I didn't video it because actually it's a bit busy and it all gets lost because the die cuts are so fine. So what I ended up doing just to add some contrast was I, you know, hand cut out some shapes can see I'm just adding more you know to the flowers around trying to fix it but yeah I all the colors were too close together and even that darker red I didn't have enough of that so I cut out some freehand flower shapes that were a bit bolder and bigger in black but yeah it still works so see how that just folds down and then you open up and you can see your little vase of flowers which is a bit cute you know I added some butterflies all around it that sort of thing you know it it did work out quite well, but like I say, it definitely needed to be lifted. So yeah, play about. That helps bold black flowers inside it. So you can now see some of those flowers pop from the background. But I'm just showing you the same, the basic, the same, the basic principle, so that all you talented people can go and do all of this loads better than I have. So for the piece that I'm showing you, I cut out really simple shapes for my flowers. I did a little bit of shadowing in the background from the pieces or the shapes left from my die cuts and, you know, just had a little bit of fun. To put it in on the background, I simply ran them through the glue and popped them down. And they still, even though they're not exact flower shapes, they still do give the same impression. So it's quite fun. I had like, you know, a, a check pink. I had a spotty pink. And then I had like, you know, a bit of a pale yellow. So I just put all those colours through and just built up the background so that 
you know, it felt like there was a vase of flowers there. Then I made my little vase. So again, I just folded it in half. And to get that inverse fold, like the bottom of the beak, I simply made a triangle. And then that is the piece. If you fold it both ways, then it's really, really easy to pop it out so that it makes the opening in your vase or, as you saw, the opening in the bottom of the beak. And this is what I mean by cutting out the vase shape. So in half, you cut it out the same way you cut a butterfly. So you're only cutting out half of it. And then when you open it up, you get the full shape of the vase. To make it feel a little bit more like a vase, I ended up inking around the edges and then I inked across the top, so like that lip of the vase, and I inked across the bottom, which was like the little foot of the vase, and that just gave it a little bit of a contrast to show the difference. But as I say, you talented people out there will be able to have lots of fun to make this you know, look wonderful, so much better in the finished result. There are so many ways that you can go with this and it doesn't have to be a vase of flowers. It can be whatever your heart desires. So I used that just to measure sort of how wide the background could be. And then what I did was I actually stuck the flowers to the inside of the vase so that it was a bit easier to stick them onto the vase first and then stick the vase down. So yeah, lots and lots of fun. And oh my goodness, it has been busy again lately. Life just seems to get busier and busier, doesn't it, everyone? You know, I'm enjoying uh, sorting out my craft room at the moment and sorting out all the kids' toys and resources and all of that sort of stuff. So we're kind of in chaos here. So it was nice just to rest for a little while and put together a bunch of flowers. Look, easier than uh, waiting for someone to buy you some flowers sometimes, isn't it? <laughs> Although I can't really complain about that. My husband, uh, when he came home the other day, he hadn't done anything wrong or anything like that. He just brings me flowers every so often just to say I love you. Uh, yeah, I know. That's pretty sad, isn't it? It's pretty gorgeous and wonderful. So the other day he came home and he actually had done something a little bit wrong and upset me. So he rang our eldest son and got him to put on a song that I love. And then he came and slid across the floor on his knees with this big bunch of flowers in his hands. So, you know, of course, I'm not really into flowers just to say sorry, but I must confess, I thought he did pretty well on that one. So yeah, he did get away with, he did get away with it. You know, you got to forgive them sometimes, haven't you? <laughs> Anyhow, see how I just added a little bit of tape in the back of that to add some strength. And now you just stick your vase down. The fold in the middle is what you're lining up to your crease. So I glued the whole other bit of the vase and the only bit that isn't glued is the bottom of the beak. Everything else is glued down. So you will see once it folds out quite easily, I'm gluing the other side and I'm just spreading the glue out to the edges because it's really important that it is nice all along that fold. And again, just pressed it down and you're better to fold your piece onto it and then open it out because then you know that your pop-up mechanism will work well. And there you go. Worked beautifully. All right, now I want to show you how I did the little pop-up on the bottom of that first vase I showed you with just the hand-drawn flowers I did on the book pages. This one oh, it takes a little bit of mucking about sometimes, but... These are the folds that I do, and I'm showing you them there on screen. This first fold is what actually gets pasted down, and that's what helps it sit at an angle. And then you do an inverse fold in the top. So I'll show you in a minute. Once it opens out, you'll, it's easier for you to actually view the folds on screen. But you're kind of doing the same inverse fold you did for that beak in the top and that's what you can sit a little saying in or you know another piece of something that you want to put in maybe another flower that you want to put on the front of the vase whatever it is so I've 
folded it quite big so that you can see it and see then you can just put whatever you want to put in that top bit and see how that just slopes forward slightly so it's another way to use the same fold see that's how it is so it's another way to use that same fold and you just get a little bit more of an angle on something you want to put on the front so I cut it right back so that it was nice and small and that's just to show you how it will sit so then it sits facing me and it just sits up a little bit and it folds in so look I know I'm not going into a great deal of detail on this front bit because there's all this you know geometry and stuff that you need to think about but sometimes just seeing it can give you enough of an idea to run away and play about a bit with it yourself so for this one on this vase I thought oh it'd be nice to have a little butterfly popping up and then the butterfly can sort of flutter its wings if you open and close it a little bit that's my theory so I decided to put the butterfly in first and then that way I can stick the whole piece down rather than trying to fiddle with it around the pop-ups that are already pasted down so you'll kind of get used to it if you muck about and look if you do a couple things will change as you do them so you know the first one was so different to the last one that I did. And the first one, it took me, oh, about six goes to try and get this little bit I'm doing now on the front. Whereas once I sort of got that principle in my head, it was then heaps easier to obviously do it for the next one. So that's the other thing, you kind of learn different ways. So it was just those little flaps that I'm pasting down into the crease nothing else so I'm folding it all flat and again I am aligning those right into the fold so you'll see I'm just pressing it all down and then when I bring it out because I didn't completely wait for the glue to dry it didn't completely open up but you'll see that I was able to still manage to salvage it so see my little butterfly is still stuck together a bit. So I just gently teased it out and then I used my bone folder, the pointy edge of it, to really go inside to make sure that those two little tiny flaps there were stuck down really well and it worked beautifully. So just allowing it to dry and then everybody was happy. The flowers were happy, the butterfly was happy and we had all four put together. I'd love it if you could leave me a comment below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed what you saw today. And of course, please subscribe if you haven't already. I will see you next time. And in the meantime, keep creating. Enjoy!